June is Pride Month and the countdown is on for Pride in the Valley. It's a festival this Saturday in downtown Warren. So let's get into the history that's led up to this year's celebration and what we can expect. I'm joined by the Engagement, Outreach and Events Coordinator of Full Spectrum, Justin Collini. Justin, thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So I know you mentioned lots of preparation goes into this. And before we get into the event that's happening this weekend, remind us how Pride Month came about mm -hmm. and how much progress has been made to celebrate the LGBTQ plus community locally and nationally? Absolutely. Um, so if we're going way back. Mm -hmm. um, Pride Month came uh, shortly after the Stonewall Riots of 1969 mm -hmm. um, and when the Gay Liberation Front started to organize en, en, en masse. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not 100% certain when the first year of Pride is, mm -hmm. but it's been going on now for at least what? Decades. Decades. Yeah. Really decades. Like over 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, as for Pride in the Valley, uh, it was first hosted in 2019 uh, by Full Spectrum Community Outreach Center, uh, which was founded back in 2016. Um, it originally started off relatively small, you know, maybe like 10, 15, 20 vendors, a couple of sponsors, uh, but it's always been in the courthouse square in Warren, uh, sponsored by the city of Warren itself, mm -hmm. which is a, itself a huge stride um, to have a, a city yeah. sponsor an LGBTQ plus event. Um, since then, it's grown every year. Uh, this is going to be our fifth annual. Uh, we served over 5,000 people last year, and we're looking, we're aiming for 7,000 this year. Uh, vendors have gone up. We have over 100 this year. Uh, we have uh, over 25 sponsors, 30 people on our parade, which is almost double last year. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're super excited. Tons of entertainers. It's going to be great. Yeah, and like you said, there has been more, even more outreach over the years as mm -hmm. it continues. Um, do you think that we've come a long way locally? And, and how else can the community, what more can the community do to be more supportive and honor the individuals who have fought for their ability to celebrate in a public way? So, yes and no to your first to your question of have we gone forward, right? So, uh, as with most social justice movements, if I may, uh, it's two steps forward, one step back. Uh, whenever there is progress in one area, there's resistance in the other. Mm. Um, I mention this because uh, in the last year, the Southern Poverty Law Center has, uh, has noticed that hate groups across the uh, country have increased by a third. Several, uh, about I think 30 of which are here in Ohio, uh, brand new in 2023. Uh, there's been over 530 anti-LGBTQ plus bills passed in the state house and Congress. Um, house Bill 68 being the most prevalent of that, its status is still in hiatus. Uh, and there have been protests last year for Ashtabula County, uh, and this year, excuse me, this year for Ashtabula County and for Broadview Heights, uh, religious-based protests. Yeah. Um, that being said, uh, the number of sponsors going up, the number of participants going up, the number of vendors going up. Uh, Full Spectrum is also working to collaborate more with local uh, queer organizations such as Mahoney Valley Queer Action, Pride Youngstown, uh, Columbiana County Pride. Actually, Ophelia Bottom, who's one of the coordinators for Columbiana County Pride, uh, won our drag pageant. And yeah. so they are going to be uh, having a huge part in our entertainment, entertainment schedule for Pride this weekend. Yeah, and it sounds like one of the best ways, I'm sure, for people to provide that support is to attend the events mm -hmm. like this weekend, uh, Pride in the Valley, this the big festival that we're expecting. So what all can we expect at this year's festival? I want to hear about the entertainment, the yeah. food, you know, what all can we expect? Oh, it's going to be fantastic. Uh, we have, I believe... 12 food trucks, if I, remember, if I recall correctly, plus a number of lemonade stands and pop-up stands all over the festival. Uh, we have some fire performers. Uh, we have uh, Starrett O'Hara, who's a local drag legend. Ophelia Bottom, who I mentioned, who is our pageant queen. Uh, we also have, um, oh, I'm forgetting her name. A lot of, a lot of entertainment. Sounds tons like of entertainment. a lot of fun, yeah. Yes, tons of entertainment coming in. Um, it's also, I want to mention that it's a family-friendly festival. Mm -hmm. There is an adult-only area. Um, that will have slightly different uh, entertainment and slightly yeah. different um, amenities provided. Yeah. But please feel free to bring your family, bring the kids. We want everybody to come and have a great time. Yeah, and just to remind people, that's this Saturday, June 15th, from 12 in the afternoon until 10 o'clock at night, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Downtown Warren, mm -hmm. so a good spot for that, of course. And just really quick before we wrap up, what other Pride events are happening throughout the summer that you want people to know about? Absolutely. Uh, so tomorrow, we're going to be doing our Pride setup, followed by a queer movie night on the lawn, sponsored in collaboration with uh, Good D Entertainment. Uh, they're letting us screen their films for free, which is awesome. Uh, it's going to be followed up by our kickoff party at Modern Methods uh, starting at 10 p.m. 
Um, our after party is going to be a club switch uh, from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. And then looking further down uh, the line, we have Pride Youngstown on the tw Saturday, the Saturday, June 22nd. Uh, we have Columbiana County Pride coming up on July 20th. Uh, um, Akron Pride is going to be out in August. So there's a, tons of different events going on. It's available yeah, all summer long. Well, thank you so much, Justin Kalini with Full Spectrum. We appreciate your time. Thank you.